Let's talk about corticosteroids. We're going to walk through the S's of steroids. These are the key points you need to know about this medication, but let's start with the first S, which is suffixes. The suffixes for steroids are sone, like prednisone, hydrocortisone. The other suffix is azone, like dexamethasone, fluticasone, and beclomethazone. Another suffix you'll see is ide, like flunisalide and cyclesonide. Let's review the mechanism of action for these drugs. Corticosteroids help to decrease inflammation. They also help to suppress the immune system. Corticosteroids are commonly used for those with an autoimmune disease, such as systemic lupus or Crohn's disease. With an autoimmune disease, the body's immune system mistakenly attacks itself. In this case, we use corticosteroids to suppress the immune system, keeping the good and healthy cells from being attacked. The next S is for several routes. Corticosteroids can be given in several routes, such as inhaled corticosteroids, also called ICSs, orally, meaning by mouth or PO, topically as creams, lotions, eye drops, or sprays, it can be injected via IV, intramuscularly, or intraarticularly, meaning into a joint. Inhaled corticosteroids, ICSs, are commonly used for asthma, COPD or chronic inflammation, nasal polyps, and rhinitis. Remember, corticosteroids decrease inflammation. This includes the airways, causing them to open and air to flow more freely through them. Next is oral steroids. These are used for systemic inflammation, chronic pain like seen in rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune diseases such as lupus or Crohn's disease, and for respiratory infections like pneumonia. Next for topical corticosteroids. These are commonly used for eczema of the skin, contact dermatitis, a rash, which could be allergic, systemic, or generalized. It can be used for insect bites or paritis, aka itching. Okay, next is injection via the IV or IM route. These are used for rapid administration to reduce inflammation quickly. It can be used for an anaphylaxic or allergic reaction. It can be used for throat swelling or respiratory infections like pneumonia. Another route is that intraarticularly, aka into the joint. This is used for chronic joint pain, chronic arthritis, or after a severe injury. If you want more information like this, you can find it in the complete pharmacology flashcards. It covers everything you need to know in your pharmacology class, but it's presented in a fun and condensed way, no more textbook fluff. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy studying, future nurses.